Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The bullet we're testing today is Barnes 130 grain TTSX, which we've got loaded up in 270 wind short mag in our Winchester Model 70, and we'll be running it from 100 to 500 yards. Of course, this is a monolithic or all copper projectile. We've gotten pretty good results with Barnes bullets in the past. If you haven't seen our previous tests with this bullet, check the description and you'll find links to them there. We're very excited to see how this round's gonna perform. So let's get started. Barnes TTSX, 130 grain, 270 wisdom, 100 yards. Did we ever record all the stuff you went through with this rifle? Oh, dude, we, we really should do like an overview video on the rifle at some point and all our <laughs> struggles with it. <laughs> okay. But man, is it a sweet shooter for what we put in. Yep. Are you get some burgers after this? Dude, hell yeah. Al's humdinger all the way. All the way. Thank you, Al. <laughs> Mucho appreciado. <laughs> hey, you went for the left ones, right? Yeah, you're going for right, right trough. Okay, cool. Shooting position's a little ghetto, man. Yeah, it's a little hood. Good shot. This is our third test with Barnes's TTSX. If you haven't seen our prior videos on this bullet, links will be posted in the video's description, or you can find them while perusing the expansion playlist on our channel. Estimated impact velocities are given, and those were calculated today using JBM ballistic software. At the 100 mark, the projectile was still moving at over 3,000 feet per second and expanded just beautifully for us exactly how we'd expect a TTSX to perform. At 200, we still get very even expansion on all sides with the pedals and ending it around the second relief groove. 300 is where we see a marked reduction in how far down the shank the pedals expanded, but for this estimated impact velocity is fairly common and still well wide enough to get the job done on most game. At 400 we drop below 2500 feet per second and the bullet doesn't look too dissimilar from the projectile recovered at the 300 mark, still good expansion from this solid copper round. At 500 we again see a little less expansion than we did at the previous ranges, but that's to be expected from this insanely tough bullet and I'm happy with this result. Moving on to our graphs, expansion starts out around 1.9 times original size of the earlier ranges and drops down until it reaches a bit over 1.6 at 500 yards, giving us average expansion of 1.86. This is fairly consistent with prior testing and a very good result, being that this is a homogeneous bullet, weight retention is extremely consistent, averaging out to basically 99%. Standard deviations are very low. Overall, the TTSX and this diameter and weight put up solid numbers that we are very happy with. This bullet has been a staple of the hunting community for well over a decade and it will continue to be for quite some time. It doesn't achieve the width that bonded core bullets do upon impact, but it does retain much more weight allowing it to cut very deep wound channels. Due to this, it's been very widely used to hunt large and dangerous game across all of North America and the African continent. I would definitely recommend to anyone looking for a premium hunting bullet that they try out the Barnes TTSX with a few caveats. First off, not all guns like copper bullets 
bullets. Now, modern copper bullets aren't as finicky as they were 20 years ago, thanks in large part to the addition of multiple relief grooves and changes in the metallurgy. But some rifles still just don't drive with all copper bullets, so if you are going to try out any copper bullet like the TTSX, the first step is to test the load in your gun. Shoot some groups and decide whether or not what your gun's printing with the TTSX or any other copper bullet is acceptable for you and your intended purpose. The second is cartridge selection. With how tough the TTSX is, it really needs velocity to open up properly. This is also true of some other comparable monolithics such as Nosler's E-Tip or Hornady's GMX. Newer projectiles like Barnes's TAC TX, LRX, or Hornady's CX do a better job of opening up at lower velocities, but they also have a slightly higher chance of coming apart upon impact at very high velocity. So with that said, it ranges past a couple hundred yards. Cartridges that really have some gas are going to allow the TTSX to function properly. Our 270 Wisdom, which we tested today, is a good example of that. At 500 yards, we were still moving at over 2250 feet per second, and we got good expansion. So a high step and magnum is a good platform to run one of these bullets in, but if you don't have one of those, all is not lost. In more moderate cartridges, you can achieve high velocities by going with lighter weight projectiles. For example, if I was using a 270 Winchester instead of a 270 Win short mag, I would look at Barnes's 110 grain offering instead of the 130, as the former develops about 200 feet per second less for comparably weighted projectiles versus the Wisdom. In our 308 and 30 yacht 6, we get 3175 and 3250 ish, respectively, out of Barnes's 130 grain TTSX and with very mild recoil out of what really are pretty average velocity chamberings. So keep in mind you can always go light for caliber so long as the manufacturer makes it. And this is a limitation that in certain cases you will run into, which can make the TTSX not the best choice. In my 6mm arc, I develop around 2850 feet per second with Barnes's 80 grain TTSX, which is the lightest 243 diameter option the TTSX comes in. Because of this, if I choose to run the TTSX, it limits the range I would otherwise feel comfortable shooting to while expecting effective expansion. So in that cartridge, I do run Hornady's CX, as we've found it expands better at lower velocities. The key theme of all this is to understand your application and how that affects your needs when it comes to a cartridge or projectile, which can be challenging to do given the wide variety of bullets available to us today, which is why we're making these videos. This expansion series is really us figuring out for ourselves what works and what doesn't so that we pick better bullets for our hunts, and by documenting our journey, hopefully providing some insight to you as well. If you do find this content helpful in any way, consider helping us out by hitting like, leaving a comment, or by subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.